Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, September 1st, 2020 meeting of the Adina City Council. It is a virtual meeting. And before we call the meeting to order, I need to provide some information to the public. This meeting is being held electronically to comply with the governor's stay safe at home MN order and to ensure the safety of all residents and our staff. All members of the city council, staff and presenters are participating from their homes or offices. And before we begin, there's a few things to cover for those listening in and planning to participate in portions of the meeting. Our city is committed to continuing to receive and hear for your input on matters. We've been collecting public input through our council correspondence web form, voicemail, and our engagement website, bettertogetheredina.org. It's important for you to know as a listener in this meeting that all comments that have been submitted have been received and read prior to the start of this meeting. All feedback is considered equally regardless of the manner in which it was submitted. Tonight you may call in to provide comment via phone during the community comment portion of the agenda. We have no public hearing matters this evening, so community comment will be the only opportunity for public comment. You're allowed to speak in public comment about anything that is not on tonight's agenda or scheduled for a future public hearing. If you want to call in for community comment, dial 800-374-0221. The conference ID is 583-1059, 583-1059. That number again is 800-374-0221. You'll be given three minutes to speak. City Manager Scott Neal will uh, be the timekeeper, and he'll let you know when you get uh, over the three-minute mark so you can wrap up your comments. We thank you in advance for your patience as we, and uh, as a council and our staff, go about working on these meetings using all types of software and almost 20 people participating from different places. We, of course, hope there won't be any issues of any kind, but if there are uh, any technological challenges, we'll make sure to get them corrected as quickly as possible. Um, so let's call the meeting to order and uh, roll call, please. Clerk Allison. Member Anderson. Here. Member Brindle. Here. Member Fisher. Here. Member Staunton. Here. Mayor Hovland. Here. Uh, the next order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance and I'll rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, divisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we have a form of meeting agenda for our virtual meeting this evening. And uh, is there anyone who wishes to modify the agenda in any manner? Um, otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to approve the meeting agenda as shown. Some of Second. Moved by Member Fisher, second by Member Brindle. Any further discussion? Roll call, please, with respect to the approval of the meeting agenda. Clerk Allison. M Member Fisher? Aye. Member Brindle? Aye. Member Staunton? Aye. Mayor Hovland? Aye. Now we are at community comment. And I'll uh, tell you again that uh, it is time to hear from residents who would like to speak about something that's not on tonight's agenda. That's a reminder. If it's on the agenda tonight, you won't be addressing it or scheduled for a future public hearing. So to participate in community comment, call 800-374-0221, a reminder on that number, and the conference ID 583-1059, 583-1059. An operator will ask for your name and street address Press star one to be put in the queue to speak. And Director Benarod, our communications director, will shepherd you into the meeting. You'll be given, as I mentioned earlier, three minutes to speak. Manager Neal will be the timekeeper and he'll let you know when you go over the three minute mark. Um, because there's a slight delay in the broadcast, we'll wait a little bit to see uh, what happens in community comment. But Director Benarod, I'll turn it over to you. Mayor and city council members, our first speaker tonight is Lori Groats. Operator, will you please unmute the line of Ms. Lori Groats? And um, Lori, please begin by stating your full name and address for the record. Thank you. Am I open? 
You are okay. We can hear you name Lori, my name is Lori Groats, 5513 Park Place. More than five years ago, the building official gave a presentation to the city council on some new software called Project Docs. And the software was uh, so that uh, builders would present or uh, submit their permits and their uh, building plans electronically and their communications would be electronically. I remember the conversation or the presentation distinctly because I remember um, the mayor had said to Mr. Fisher, well, that's great. Now the residents don't have to go to City Hall to look at documents. And to which he responded, no, they'd made the decision that residents would have to come into the city council and use a terminal in the city to look at the public documents. Well, City Hall has, city hall has been closed all summer now, so residents don't have access to those documents. Hennepin County had something similar with their real estate department, specifically for title uh, uh, documents. You could only access them if you used a county terminal, and generally you went down to the county to access the terminal. But with their building now closed, early this spring, the county changed their policy. and. If a resident emailed the county, the, e, um, the county would email back with a username and password so residents could access those documents electronically from their home or wherever they are. That is what I'm asking for the city council to do, to make a modification for this so that residents can access the documents. Building continues in the city, and residents need the ability to get in and to take a look at the plans and other documents, the public documents that the builders have submitted. I've had two teardowns done by me, and I can't imagine not having access to public documents that are at City Hall. So um, I'm asking you, please, the uh, City Council, to request that there be a modification to that policy so that residents can um, send in an email and request what the username and password is for the website. I have not seen where it's available, only where the login is available for a builder. So uh, I guess that's my comment tonight. And I wouldn't want it to see um, as a data request. That would be too onerous on the public and also to city staff. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Yes, thank you, Ms. Groats. Next speaker Dr. Ben tonight, our next speaker tonight is Kyle Kirsch. Operator, will you please unmute the line of Kyle Kirsch? And Kyle, please begin by stating your full name and address for the record. Kyle Kirsch. My address is 6020 Leslie Lane. And uh, thank you, Mayor and City Council members, for uh, allowing me to uh, make a comment. And my comment tonight is about the Edina, City of Edina's COVID webpage. And you know, I just recently learned that we have a, our own COVID webpage, and I looked at it in the last couple of weeks or so, and a lot of data on there. But so the data up till about a week and a half, two weeks ago, didn't include the ages of those who had died in the city of Edina. And at the time, there was about 39 people or so who died um, from COVID. And I did email the, uh, the uh, Edina Health Division. I asked the question about um, publicizing the ages of death and it wasn't available, but then within the last week or so, it has become available, which I appreciate the city providing that. However, it's very limited, and all it has for ages of death is age 70 and over. And the Minnesota Department of Health lists ages of death and cases in five-year increments all the way up to age 100. And my, my request is that we include that same information uh, when it comes to not only the, the age of cases, but the age of death because I would suspect, just like in the, in the state of Minnesota, the ages of death primarily are over the age of 80. That's, you know, certainly the, the data suggesting that in the state of Minnesota. The reason that I think this is important is because we are shaping 
public policy and, and school and education policy on COVID. And when I look at how many kids are affected by this, it's, I think there's five people who have died uh, in the state of Minnesota under the age of 30. And so I think it's important that we as residents have that data available to us, not only at the state level, but at the city level, so that when, again, public policy is made, when education policy is made, we as residents can have all the information at our, uh, at our uh, you know, available to us so that we can provide input to our elected officials. So I thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you, Mr. Kirsch. Nice to hear your voice. Yeah, good to hear yours as well. Director Council Benjamin. members, I do not um, show anyone else um, looking to speak right now. I do have some other people on the line, so I would recommend that we wait just a minute or two in case someone decides they'd like to speak. As a reminder to those on the intercall, you need to press star one on your telephone keypad, that's star one, not the usual pound one, star one to indicate a desire to speak. Um, and then you will be in the queue. Um, I'm still not seeing anyone, Mayor, but I would recommend we wait for a minute or so. All right, thank you, Director Renner. We'll wait uh, until you give us uh, a cue to move forward. to move on at this point. All right, thank you, Director Benarod. Uh, the next matter we have is the city manager's response to community comments from our prior meeting. Oh. And um, Manager Neal. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> we did not have any community comments uh, at, our, at our last meeting, so I don't have anything for this item tonight. All right, very good. Well, you got a couple of interesting questions to look at for next the next meeting, I'd say. Um, next is the consent agenda. Several items on the consent agenda. Um, does anyone on the council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda for discussion purposes? Uh, hearing nothing, is there a motion to adopt the uh, items on the consent agenda as shown? So moved. Member Fisher moves. Second. Member Brindle seconds. Any further discussion? Uh, roll call, please, with respect to potential adoption of the consent agenda. Clerk Allison. Member Brindle. Aye. Member Fisher. Aye. Member Staunton. Aye. Mayor Hufflin. Aye. The uh, items on the consent agenda are adopted. The only thing I wanted to make a quick note of on the uh, consent agenda was the very last item, I think, the um, Resolution accepting donations. We had some very generous donations this reporting period uh, to the Park and Rec Department. Amy Sharp and Dean Jones uh, donated $2,000 for five conifer trees at Coteen Park. And uh, Michael Benz, uh, a bench donation of $3,200 in memory of a loved one. And the same for Barbara Penair and Bill Lau, uh, $3,200 uh, for a bench donation. So. Thanks to those residents of Edina for their generosity, and um, I think in remembrance of, uh, of loved ones. That's very, very touching. 
Uh, and then also a donation from the DNR to the fire department. Uh, one washing machine valued at $1,000. So um, that hits the unique gift category. Uh, moving on to the next portion of the agenda, uh, special recognitions and presentations. And tonight is uh, always an interesting night for the city council with respect to um, uh, the images of Edina photo contest presentation. I think uh, uh, Katie Locks is here from uh, our communications department who's going to handle this matter for us. We've got some you know, wonderful uh, winners this year, uh, this year's panel of volunteer judges. I think uh, uh, Ms. Locks will talk about who those people were and the uh, effort they went through. So I'll turn it over to you, uh, Ms. Locks, welcome. Thanks, Mayor. Good evening, everyone, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Katie Lauchs, the graphic designer here at the City of Edina. And tonight I have the pleasure of announcing the winners of the 2020 Images of Edina Photo Contest. First, just a little bit of a background about the contest. The City established Images of Edina in 2004 to recognize and collect photographs that capture Edina as a place for living, learning, raising families, and doing business. The City and Edina Magazine co-sponsored the event again this year. Thanks to Angela Johnson and the whole team over at Edina Magazine. Every year, residents and employees who work in Edina are invited to submit their favorite photos taken over the past year in the community. This year, we had 60 submitted photos. A judging panel of communications professionals chose the winning photographs in five categories. There was also an online vote on Edina Magazine for the Reader's Choice Award. Of the category winners, one photo was chosen for the best in show, which I'm going to reveal tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen and go on to the winners. Okay. So the first category is activities and events. And the winner is Leah Steidel for her photo, Distance Learning with Dad. Congratulations, <laughs> Leah. I think we a lot of parents can relate to this photo right now. <laughs> the next category is business. And the award for this category goes to Vicki Hurwitz for Mirror Image. Beautiful photo of Centennial Lakes Park. The next category is people. Kindergarten Besties was the winner. And this is again by Leah Steidel. Congratulations, Leah. Very cute. Places in Edina was the next category. And again, Vicki Hurwitz won this for her photograph, Artful Arches. We really liked the composition of this photo from Centennial Lakes Park again. And the last category is plants and animals. This is About to Take Flight by Lisa Asp. Beautiful. I think most of the winners are tuning in tonight. I wish I knew where this was from in, in Edina. And next is the Reader's Choice Award. And this was voted on Edina Magazine. And the winner is Bridget Melnick for Rise Above. Very cute. Okay, and now it's time for the big reveal. This is the best in show photo, and it goes to Lisa Asp for About to Take Flight. Congratulations, Lisa. And winners, thanks for tuning in tonight, and congratulations again on your wonderful <laughs> photographs. Um, just be sure to have your cameras ready to get some good shots for next year. Thank you. Those are some terrific photos. Ms. Lokes, and congr our congratulations to uh, Vicki Hurwitz, uh, Leah Steigl, uh, Lisa Asp, and Bridget Melnick. Those were just fantastic photos. I'm so pleased that they are willing to participate in the contest, and we all sure benefited from that. That uh, uh, that one uh, of uh, distance learning with Dad really created some chuckles for me. That was uh, <laughs> interesting to see. <laughs> Too much time with dad, it looked like, for the 
daughter. Um, so good. You're going to. Um, it was uh, always a pleasure to be able to give people their uh, their awards at a city council meeting, and you're going to make sure, Ms. Laux, that they get their awards uh, circulated to them some way, somehow. Yep, their awards will be mailed after this. Okay, good. Any other council members have comments or thoughts? Just to thank the photographers, they did a great job. Fun photos. I always enjoy seeing these. You sure do. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Logs, for being with us this evening. Thanks, Good to see you. Um, now we're on the correspondence and petitions. That was the end, uh, the only uh, item in the uh, special recognitions and presentations portion of the agenda this evening. We've got a petition for improvements to Glen uh, Bryce uh, Circle. Um, and I think, uh, Director Milner, did you want us to receive this and direct it to the engineering department? Correct, Mayor. Yep, please accept it. Direct it to us. I've already been having discussions with these residents. We'll come back with a response uh, okay. later this fall. All right. Is there a uh, motion to... Um, Receive the petition and forward it to the engineering department for uh, review and response. So moved. Second. Second, we got a motion by Member Stein and second by Member Brindle uh, to uh, accept and refer the uh, petition for potential improvements to Glenbray Circle to the engineering department. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Clerk Allison. Member Brindle. Aye. Member Fisher. Aye. Member Staunton? Aye. Mayor Hufflin? Aye. Uh, the uh, petition is received with respect to potential improvements at Glen Bray Circle. Uh, and the next petition was uh, that was uh, submitted was the first park and green space at Dugan Plaza uh, in Abercrombie Drive. And of course, this is a lot that we've been talking about. Uh, uh, and then on August 18th, uh, that petition was withdrawn to uh, convey that property to the then Housing Foundation. Uh, and since then, the neighbors, I think maybe uh, contemporaneously with that meeting, the, the petition was submitted. And so is there a motion to accept that petition and, and refer it to uh, the appropriate uh, city personnel, city departments for review and recommendation to the council? So moved. Member Fisher moves. Second. Member Member Brindle seconds. Any further uh, discussion on that item? Roll call, please, Ms. Ellison. Member Brindle. Aye. Member Fisher. Aye. Member Staunton. Aye. Mayor Helplin. Aye. The petition uh, to preserve park green space at Dugan Plaza and Abercrombie Drive is received and, and referred on to the appropriate uh, departments for review and recommendation. Uh, and that completes that portion of the agenda. Member Brindle, I'm going to try to break your record tonight for the shortest meeting. I don't know how <laughs> close I am here, but we're getting pretty close. It was kind of stunning when I saw the agenda. <laughs> so no comments, Member Brindle. No, no, don't be trying to Yeah. Okay. All right. And we are on to council comments. Member Brindle, do you want to lead us off? Uh, sure. Um, let's see here. I think I'll do aviation noise first. All right. Very good. Um, so the next noise oversight committee meeting is September 16th. And, uh, I'm assuming that is going to be a call in meeting. The last two meetings we meet every other month, uh, have been call in meetings. Um, the skies are still quiet. Um, and, uh, and it wasn't, over, over time, um, especially since we had last fall already, a, um, a community listening session hosted at the, by the city of Edina at the training facility, um, been thinking about an airport relations commission in the city of Edina to, to kind of uh, continue those conversations on a more regular basis and provide feedback to the airport. We have parts of our city that when air traffic is busy are really impacted by aviation noise. 
and we have parts of our city that are not impacted nearly as much. So, um, so it, I, I think that this commission would be uh, appreciated by the community. It's something that I've put pen to paper on and haven't gotten back to. So I think after the first of the year, it's something I will put some more time into. So, um, so that's what I have. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Member Fisher. Nothing for me. You don't want to talk about our noon outing? <laughs> uh, you, you can share that. Okay. Member Stoughton. Nothing for me. I'm here to help you set the record. Thank you. Well, and I will speak quickly. Uh, Member Fisher and I attended a ribbon cutting at 7700 France, and what a pleasure that was during the uh, coronavirus era to cut a ribbon at a, uh, at a new project over at 7700 where just this tremendous landscaping improvement that they've made with bocce ball courts and, uh, and um, uh, other kinds of outdoor activities in front of the building, uh, beautiful landscaping, uh, and then some building improvements as well. And then welcoming the nerdery uh, to Edina, their new uh, corporate headquarters with about 300 employees at 7700 France. Uh, and then on the... Um, uh, on the tab side of things, uh, I got a call. Uh, yet again, they're going to look at Met Council governance and the model for it. And um, so I guess as the representative of the tab, I'll serve on that uh, that task force that the governor's put together. So that's it for me. Um, manager comments, uh, Manager Neal, you've got one action item for us, and that's resolution 2019-55. And I'm sure you'll want to discuss a little bit uh, the potential authorization uh, of a levy for the HRA. Manager Neal. I do. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, oops. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Actually, this is, this is not an action item for tonight. Uh, when we went back and looked at the Council's previous action on the HRA levy, uh, you took the necessary action that we needed for the 2020 levy and the 2021 levy uh, at the same time in uh, December of, of 2019. So what we're it just informing you tonight, we've run this through uh, our legal counsel just to make sure that it was appropriate and we didn't need an additional action from you this year. I just wanted to explain that's where the number comes from. So the $230,400 uh, proposed levy, uh, again, is the preliminary levy for the, for the HRA for 2021. Once it's certified, uh, that's what goes out in terms of, of computing uh, tax notices. And then council has the final action on that item sometime in December, at which time you, could, you can't increase it, uh, but you can lower it at that time. So this is the, only the preliminary action and that's where the numbers came from. All right, good, thank you. I scrolled down a little bit further and I see that we did adopt that on September 4th, 2019. So um, please we don't have to go through that effort again. Um, anything further, Manager Neal, from you? I do, you? actually. I do got a, I have a couple of quick items. I hope they're quick. Um, one is that we, we did find out um, uh, late yesterday afternoon uh, in the U.S. District Court, that Judge Patrick uh, Schiltz uh, did grant um, uh, motions to, uh, to excuse me, his, he issued an order yesterday in the RJR Tobacco versus City of Edina uh, case that uh, we previously discussed here. Uh, the order uh, denies the plaintiff's motion for preliminary injunction and uh, grants a plaintiff grants um, our, the defendant's uh, uh, motions to dismiss without prejudice and with, and with president, uh, prejudice on, on, and on the merits, uh, two of the plaintiff's claims against us. And, I've asked Roger, we've had a little bit of a discussion about this today, if he could just give a, a bit more of context to, to that decision. Mr. Oh, thank you, Manager Neal. Uh, Mr. Knudsen? The court dismissed their case with prejudice. So that's the final judgment of the court. That our ordinance goes into effect, I believe it's today, is valid. Now we we predict that they will appeal that decision very quickly. Okay. 
All right. So was it, I haven't had a chance to read the order yet, but did he dismiss the request for injunctive relief with prejudice yep. or without yep. prejudice? He dismissed their whole case with prejudice. They, they dismissed their whole case. Injunction. Okay. That was what I was going to do. I was going to check. I was going to check on the case itself. All right. The case has been dismissed. With prejudice. All right. Yeah. All right. So they've got an appealable situation then. Yes, they do. All right, good. Yeah, well, that was uh, quite good news today. Thank and you. I, did, I, sent the, I sent the court's order out to uh, council members late this afternoon. Uh, another thing that I, I just wanted to briefly comment on was that I, I think that right before the meeting, council members received an email that had some questions about our elections, uh, uh, more specifically where elections were going to take place uh, in 2020. Um, in the summer, we were looking for uh, ways that we could uh, conduct uh, this fall's election uh, in a way that's safe and healthy for both the election judges and for voters involved. So we began to look at some possible alternatives for doing um, absentee voting and uh, here in City Hall than here in City Hall. We don't, we've had some trouble in the past with stacking people up in line in the in past elections and we were concerned that uh, we were going to have that um, and even maybe more of it this year than we had before so we were looking at possible alternatives and we thought we had an alternative location uh, identified but as we as we spent more time analyzing it it just didn't seem like it was going to work so uh, what we're doing now is just what we have done in the past and we're we're going to be having our absentee voting and our direct balloting uh, occurring at City Hall, uh, like we have in the past. We are looking at uh, options that provide even more um, convenience to voters. And uh, we're, we're still studying those about how we put them on, but the location for, uh, for absentee voting and direct balloting prior to the election will be City Hall as it has been in previous years. All right, very good, thank you. And that's, uh, and that's all I've got for tonight. All right. Thank you, Manager Neal. Did that prompt any uh, inquiry or further comment from any council members? Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Okay. Moved by uh, Member Brindle, second by Member Staunton. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call, please, with respect to the motion to adjourn. Member Brindle. Aye. Member Fisher? Aye. Member Staunton? Aye. Mayor Hovland? Aye. We stand adjourned.